Section. Introduction. In this section, we discuss how in recent times, we've seen large language models, LLMs, excel in a variety of tasks across different fields. However, the downside to these advancements is the enormous computational cost, which can only be supported by significant financial resources and results in a considerable environmental impact. To address these challenges, there's been a push within the research community towards making LLMs more efficient. A notable strategy that has emerged is the use of mixture of experts, MO, methods. Models like Switch and Mixtral have shown that it's possible to maintain high performance while significantly reducing computational demands. Given the current trend of increasing investments in training language models, we ponder whether MO models will remain appealing in the future. This question is crucial because some studies suggest that as models scale up, the efficiency gap between MO and traditional transformers might narrow, or dense models might even surpass MO in performance. In our paper, we challenge these assertions by questioning some underlying assumptions from previous research, specifically the fixed training duration and the constant size of experts in MO models. We present findings that a MO model optimized for computation, with a budget of 10 to the power of 20 floating point operations, flops, can match the quality of a dense transformer model that uses 20 times more computational resources. Moreover, the computational savings increase, surpassing 40 times when the budget exceeds 10 to the power of 25 flops. We also highlight that the common practice of matching the size of MO experts to the feed forward layer size is rarely the best choice. Our main contributions include introducing a new hyperparameter called granularity, which helps us find the optimal size for MO experts, thereby enhancing efficiency. We've developed new scaling laws for MO models that take into account variable training durations, the number of parameters, and granularity. These laws enable us to identify the best training hyperparameters for MO models. Our results demonstrate that MO models, when optimally configured, can outperform traditional transformers at any level of computational budget, contradicting previous findings. In the related work section, we delve into the history and development of MO in language modeling, starting with its introduction as a sparsely gated layer in LSTM models and its adaptation to transformers. Various modifications to the original MO concept have been proposed, including changes to the routing mechanism and the architecture of the MO layer itself. Our work stands out by offering a detailed comparison of how training hyperparameters affect performance and by providing clear criteria for selecting these parameters. Lastly, we provide a brief overview of transformers, describing them as models composed of an embedding layer, alternating attention and feed-forward layers, and an unembedding layer. The feed-forward component, which is our focus due to its significant parameter count and computational demand, is essentially two linear transformations with a nonlinearity in between. This setup, especially the feed-forward layers, is where MO models aim to introduce efficiency improvements. Section Summary In this section, we explore the challenges faced by large language models, LLMs, due to high computational costs and carbon footprints, leading to the emergence of mixture of experts, MO, methods as a more efficient alternative. By introducing a new hyperparameter called granularity and deriving scaling laws for MO models, we demonstrate that with optimal settings, MO models can outperform traditional transformers at any computing budget, contrary to previous claims. Our work provides a comprehensive comparison of training hyperparameters and principled selection criteria, offering insights into the efficiency and effectiveness of MO models in comparison to standard transformers. Section mixture of experts. In this section, we delve into the concept of mixture of experts, MO, within the framework of transformers. The fundamental idea here is to substitute the standard feed-forward layer with a collection of expert networks, each mirroring the original layer's dimensions. Specifically, the dimension of these expert networks is set to be the same as that of the feed-forward layer. As a result, the total number of parameters increases linearly with the addition of more experts. However, the computational cost doesn't significantly rise since each input is only processed by a select few of these experts. 
Moving on to the topic of scaling laws, it's observed that large transformer-based models follow a certain power law relationship that links the final loss, the model size, and the number of training tokens. This relationship, often referred to as the chinchilla scaling laws, breaks down into three components that account for the inherent entropy in the data, the model's limitations, and the constraints imposed by the training data. At the heart of this relationship is the understanding that, with unlimited data and model size, the loss could theoretically be minimized to a constant value inherent to the data. For MO transformer models, the final loss has been specifically calculated for a dataset size of 130 billion tokens, considering variations in the expansion rate. However, this calculation comes with the caveat that it's only applicable to the dataset size in question. The scalability and effectiveness of the model are somewhat limited under these conditions, as aligning the number of training samples with the computational resources available is crucial for optimal performance. It's been noted that keeping the dataset size constant while increasing the neural network size can lead to undertraining, which in turn affects the model's performance. In terms of granularity, we propose a slight deviation from the standard setting where the dimension of each expert network is equal to that of the feed forward layer. Instead, we suggest adjusting the hidden dimension of the expert to a more effective value. This adjustment introduces two key hyperparameters granularity and expansion rate. Granularity, in essence, is a multiplier that indicates the change in size of an expert compared to the original model. We explore scenarios where experts are smaller than in the standard layer, which does not impact the number of active parameters. As granularity increases, more experts are involved in processing a token, but the number of active parameters remains constant. The expansion rate, on the other hand, quantifies the increase in the number of parameters from a standard transformer layer to a MO layer. This concept is closely tied to the number of experts through granularity. Essentially, adjusting granularity for a given expansion rate allows the model more flexibility in mapping data points to experts, which could potentially enhance performance. We also investigate whether granular MO models adhere to scaling laws and how granularity influences them. Through over 100 experiments on a decoder-only transformer architecture with MO layers, involving models of various sizes and training durations, we aim to establish a parametric scaling law. These experiments help us predict the final loss based on granularity, the total number of non-embedding parameters, and the number of training tokens. Our findings, detailed in the appendix, also include comparisons with dense transformers to gauge the performance of MO models. Section Summary In this section, we explore the concept of mixture of experts, MO, in transformers, where the feed-forward layer is replaced by a set of expert modules. The number of parameters in MO scales linearly with the number of experts, but the computational cost remains constant as inputs are processed by a subset of experts. We investigate the impact of granularity and expansion rate on MO architecture, showing how adjusting these parameters can affect the model's performance and adherence to scaling laws. Section. Power Law with Respect to Granularity In this section, we delve into whether models that use different levels of detail, or granularity, adhere to certain scaling laws. We noticed from our observations that as we increase the level of detail in our models, the error rate tends to decrease. This decrease in error follows a pattern that looks a lot like an exponential decrease, eventually stabilizing at a certain low level. When we talk about scaling the size of our models and the datasets they learn from, we refer to a specific mathematical relationship that involves three key factors. The inherent complexity of the data, the limitations in how our models can represent functions, and the data itself. This relationship doesn't change regardless of the model design we use. Even when we keep the level of detail constant, we see a similar pattern of scaling in both the model size and the dataset size which is consistent with what we've observed in more densely built models. A particularly interesting point we explore is how the concept of granularity fits into the broader scaling laws we observe. We aim to integrate granularity into these laws in a way that makes sense across different model sizes and dataset sizes. 
Our goal is to find a mathematical function that can accurately describe this relationship, taking into account that some parameters might not change with different levels of detail. We also consider the lowest possible error rate we can achieve as we make our models bigger and train them with more data. Interestingly, this lower limit doesn't seem to depend on how detailed our models are suggesting that the fundamental challenges in learning from data are consistent across different levels of granularity. In our exploration, we find that the benefits of using larger datasets are pretty much the same, no matter the level of detail in the model. This indicates that the size of the dataset and the level of detail in the model don't really affect each other. When it comes to how model size impacts performance, we assume a certain mathematical relationship that doesn't change with the level of detail. However, we do acknowledge that the specific impact of granularity could be represented by a particular parameter in our equations. We also touch on the idea that models with an infinite level of detail but fewer active parameters might theoretically achieve the best possible performance. However, we argue that in practice, a model that uses all of its parameters effectively is likely to perform better than one that only uses a few, even if it has a high level of detail. To better understand these relationships, we fit our theoretical models to actual data, using a specific type of model known as a mixture of experts, MO, and comparing it to a more traditional, densely connected model. We use a specific method to minimize error in our fits and adjust for overfitting to ensure our models generalize well to new data. Finally, we examine how well our models fit the data by removing the top performing models and recalculating our parameters. The results remain consistent, which reassures us of the stability of our findings. In comparing MO models to traditional dense models, we find that MO models might require more training to reach their peak performance but ultimately scale better. This is an important consideration when deciding between model types, especially when we take into account the computational resources each model type uses. In the next steps, we plan to determine the most efficient level of detail for a given computational budget, aiming to find the sweet spot where we get the best performance for our investment in computational power. Section Summary In this section, we investigate the scaling laws of granular models, observing that increasing granularity leads to lower loss and returns following an exponential pattern converging to a positive constant. We derive a power law equation independent of architecture, showing a power law relationship in model and dataset size for constant granularity. By incorporating granularity into the joint scaling law, we aim to identify parameters independent of granularity and explore the scaling properties of mixture of experts, MO, models compared to dense transformers. Section. Optimal allocation of computational budget. In this section, we discuss how allocating the computational budget optimally can lead to better performance in training models. We've found that using more detailed or granular approaches in training can reduce errors, but this doesn't always translate to faster training times. Specifically, when the granularity level, denoted as G, is set too high relative to the model's dimension, the training process can slow down due to increased routing costs. We can measure these costs in terms of floating point operations, flops, needed for routing. We acknowledge that increasing granularity introduces challenges such as higher computational and communication costs, along with a larger memory requirement. The main reason for these increased costs is the need for more routing operations as the number of granular experts grows, which directly correlates with the granularity level, g even in models without granularity, where g equals 1 routing costs exist but are usually considered minor. To understand the computational cost, we look at the formula that calculates the number of flops used. This formula takes into account the expansion rate E, granularity G, and constants representing the flops per active parameter ratio for routing and the rest of the network. The formula also includes the number of active parameters within a transformer block and within a routing network. We delve deeper into the specifics of these constants in the appendix and exclude certain operations from our flop calculations for simplicity. Further analysis led us to adopt a specific assumption for scaling the model's dimension and the number of blocks in relation to the increase in the number of parameters, n. This assumption helps us calculate the total number of parameters, excluding the routing matrix, 
in both the feed forward layer and the attention mechanisms. Moving on to finding the optimal formula for computational allocation, we face a complex optimization problem. Since solving this analytically is challenging, we use Brent's method for approximation. We then present the results of this optimization for different flops budgets and show the optimal configurations for selected model sizes. To ensure the reliability of these predictions, we estimate the uncertainty through bootstrapping, with detailed results available in the appendix. Contrary to some previous findings, our results demonstrate that mixture of experts, MO, models are always more efficient than dense transformers, regardless of the model size. MO models scale better with optimal training, although they might not perform as well as dense models under short training schedules. This indicates that there's a point at which both models become undertrained as model size increases, but with proper selection of training hyperparameters, MO models increasingly outperform dense models. Lastly, we discuss the concept of extreme granularity. While model performance generally improves with higher granularity, we observe a performance decline at very high levels of granularity, especially when the routing mechanism's parameters outnumber those in the actual experts. This decline is more pronounced in larger models. We suggest that the efficiency of highly granular models could potentially be improved through better expert initialization or routing algorithm adjustments, though these ideas are reserved for future research. Section Summary In this section, we demonstrate that higher granularity can reduce loss with the same training steps, but this may not hold true when considering wall clock time due to potential bottlenecks in training caused by routing costs. Increasing granularity can lead to challenges like higher computational and communication costs, mainly due to increased routing operations with a larger pool of experts. We tackle the computational cost of granularity by analyzing flops, and while extreme granularity can enhance model performance, there's a performance decline at excessively high levels, suggesting the need for careful expert initialization or routing algorithm modifications for future efficiency improvements. Section. Varying expansion rate. In this section, we delve into the topic of varying expansion rates. Due to limitations in computational resources, we decided to focus on an expansion rate, E, of 64 as this was the recommended value and also the one used for the largest models in other studies, as well as the best performing configuration in certain cases. However, we recognize the significance of exploring different expansion rates since the choice of E can vary depending on factors such as the desired model size in terms of memory usage. To address this, we've included in the appendix the outcomes of our study for an expansion rate of 16 demonstrating that our main conclusions remain applicable even with this variation. Another aspect we considered was the potential to integrate all the factors, namely, the number of experts, n, the depth, d, the granularity, g, and the expansion rate, e, into a single formula. This integration could allow for a more detailed examination of how these coefficients interact with one another. However, Recommending an optimal configuration based solely on flops, floating point operations per second, would be challenging in this context. This is because higher values of E often lead to improved performance but also require more memory, making the choice of expansion rate heavily dependent on the specific hardware setup available. We plan to explore these relationships in greater depth in future work. When it comes to modeling the cost of granularity, it's crucial to understand that the exact estimation of training costs for mixture of experts, MO, models varies depending on the training setup, the hardware used, and the implementation details. Specifically, increasing the granularity, G, can result in higher data transfer costs, especially in distributed training scenarios. Therefore, the careful selection of hyperparameters should take these factors into account. In our research, we've chosen to model operation costs using flops, a common approach in the scaling laws literature. It's also worth mentioning that, in our experiments, we observed significant improvements in fine-grained MO models in terms of the wall clock time required to reach a certain level of perplexity, as illustrated in one of our figures.